Good evening. This is your host, Dan Stafford, with the Midwestern Geek in Cali. And tonight's episode is, yeah, you guessed it, all about coronavirus and what it's doing to the world, um, economic fallout, health tips, uh, things people are doing to relieve the stress. You got to talk about it. It's everywhere. So uh, just to let you all know, hey, I'm alive and well. We're hanging in there. I'm actually still working. I'll be going to work tomorrow. Uh, Everything's uh, interesting on the job front, but it looks like it's going to be good. We're going to be, uh, I I teach IT, so we're going to be facilitating long distance learning for our students. Uh, We're working very hard on that, and that's part of what I'll be dealing with tomorrow when I go into work. So uh, above and beyond that note, uh, I have a a fair amount of news for you tonight. I'm not going to make it a big show because I don't want it to be all about that. I've got tons and tons and tons of the regular content I would normally cover all backed up. Um, There's been a lot of that news, but I'm not going to get into that tonight. I'll save it for next week because we're probably going to need things to help keep us from getting bored. Uh, So let's go ahead and uh, get over into some of the stories that I want to cover and uh, we'll get a little bit of that infinity screen here going on for a minute and we'll go from there all right Uh, oof I kind of forgot one little thing I'm gonna need to do so hang tight with me for just a minute and we'll get back to where we belong here because I'm gonna save that for the tail end now, let's get the specs on so I can read with you. This is on Mother Jones Magazine. Minnesota and Vermont just classify grocery store clerks as emergency workers. Now, you you all know if you've been watching any of my episodes that I don't really um, dive down and show off everything that's going in, on in these articles. I kind of give you a little bit of a rundown and let you go and read it. As you all know, if you've watched any of my shows at all, I have uh, extensive show notes with links to every article that I reference in the show. So you definitely will be able to find it. Just go to MidwesternGeekAndCali.com and all the links for that will be there on the latest show. Um, When you get there, this is what it should look like, except you're going to be seeing episode 110. All right, so we're going to go back to this. I'm not going to talk too much about this article. It's pretty self-explanatory, but bottom line is the people that are saving our bacon right now are grocery store clerks and checkout cashiers, baggers, uh, you know, fire people, medical personnel, yeah, working stiffs, working stiffs that do things that keep uh, society functioning right now, you, you know. It's not executives, it's not uh, politicians, it's people that actually do the stuff that make our lives possible, that are really the stars right now, the ones that really shine. And I I can't stress this enough, those of you that are going out there working and keeping society intact, uh, you know, the technical people, the plumbers, the electricians, the railroaders, the truckers, I mean, it, it's so obvious right now to anybody with a nose on their face that these are the people that we really need. So just saying uh, hats off to you folks. And, uh, you know, this should be getting done in every state. Just saying. So let's go ahead and move on from that. I need a little bit of sip of the rocket fuel here. It's been a long uh, weekend, but a good one. Uh, All right. How the coronavirus pandemic exposed deficiencies in our economy. Uh, This is video on CBS. I'm not going to play it for you. I'll let you go play it yourself. But I strongly recommend watching this because it makes a very eloquent point. And it's short, directly to the point. And it points out something that we should have understood all along uh, that we used to understand in days gone by. I I can remember what's being talked about in this video being practiced in um, my grandparents' era and earlier. 
even when I was a young kid. And I just want to say this, this video will take you all of two minutes to watch, but it, it's something everyone should be thinking about now. So I uh, just want to go to that and then I'm going to point out another video briefly. Economic fallout of the coronavirus. This goes into a lot more detail about what's happening as a result of the coronavirus. The preceding video is the one message that you really should take away. That's also included in here, but it deserved enough attention that even CBS recognized that it should be pulled out and stated flatly and on its own because it's a statement that really stands on its own and I strongly encourage you to watch that first video it's very brief but um, e even more so than this one so let's move on all right so this one kind of amazes me it, it really points out to me how serious the situation is when you are talking about a conservative, quote-unquote, conservative administration talking about dealing out direct cash payments to regular working Americans, given their stance over the last um, 30, 40 years, uh, the conservative side of, of American politics, and their focus on the supply side of the economy, on big business, on uh, you know the wealthy, and making sure that you know, they can uh, trickle down the the wonders of the American economy to the rest of us, um, and they step up and they do what basically amounts to short-term socialism. It speaks to me of how serious the issue is economically. And I, I applaud what they're doing because you're going to have to do something to keep the economy running, right? Uh, the economy is obviously more complex than a Monopoly game, but the bottom line is, is if you ever played Monopoly, you know the game stops when one person has all the money because, the, you know, nothing. if money's not flowing, the economy's not working. And what's the worst effect of a situation like this is that the money stops moving. It stops being able to flow. Credit to businesses dries up. Payments to workers dry up. That trickles down into those workers aren't buying haircuts, aren't buying tanks of gas, aren't buying dinners out, aren't buying movie tickets, aren't paying their car payments, aren't paying their mortgage loans. That doesn't trickle down. That trickles up. That trickles up into the economy. It's when the regular people stop moving money through the economy. It's like a monopoly game when one person gets all the money. Only in this case, the money's just got nowhere to go because people people stop working. You know, I mean, if they're not working because everything's shut down, then they're not going to have any money to move. It, I, all the money. It's like. Somebody turned, it took and turned all the faucets off. There's millions and millions of faucets that actually move money around the economy and like water, and it's shut off, dried up. And it takes an awful lot to get things going. So this this is like, if you've ever lived in real a real cold weather environment in winter in the northern part of the country, you know that if you've got a room on the outside and it's really getting cold out, um, you know, and the heat in the room's not so good, you need to leave the faucet trickling a little bit in order for that thing not to break the pipes. And uh, if the White House and the Republican Party is going to do something like this, the bottom line is, is you know it's serious. So uh, it's a take it seriously, this economic issue, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. All right, Federal Reserve cuts rates to zero and losses massive 
700 billion quantitative easing program. I've seen stories more recently than this. This is from back on March 15th, throwback Thursday. They're talking about doing quantitative easing at the rate of a trillion dollars a day now. Um, so it's gone quite a bit up from here. The rate cuts are way down. I don't know what more they can do at the Fed. Uh, they probably don't have many tools left in the toolbox. Uh, so it's going to need to be a, a lot of stimulus along with this to try to keep the economy limping along until we can get over this health-wise and get people back to work and open businesses back up. So here you go. Another sign of the serious times. Disney closing. Disney closing. You know, if Disney shuts down, it's got to be serious. Uh, this is from a little earlier on. This is March 12th. You know, it, it may be a little bit old news, but just the the nail the nail that uh, tied the shutdown railroad together. <laughs> I, I don't know how else you can, I mean, between the White House pushing uh, a trillion and a half stimulus directly to Americans in a lot of cases and Disney shutting down, take it seriously, folks, it really is. All right, so we're going to um, close this out. This is a little bit of something that I was talking about back in the day. This is an article um, from quite a while back. Um, it's out of the archives on Yes Magazine. Uh, back in the Depression era, the economy was it just dumped. It was gone. Dollars weren't moving. No one had any money. Prices were falling like crazy. Um, have you looked at the prices on your gas pumps lately? Yeah. Well, think of everything in the economy doing this. All right, everything in the economy, the prices were dropping, but no one had any money to spend because they were out of work. The big businesses had shut down. It's very much like what we're dealing with now. Very, very much so. Um, it, you know, we're 10 years earlier into the century than they were in that era, but here's what folks did. They set up cooperatives, and there were there were small to medium-sized ones all over around the country after a year or so, maybe two. But it, it took them a little while to come to this, and they did this all with paper. Now I want to say I want to say this right here and right now. Think about they had no computers. They did everything they did. They did on paper. We have technology and networks and computers to help us do with something like this now, if it needs to go to this point. But um, they had organizations like the UXA and the UCRO. And what these organizations were, were labor exchanges. And basically, if you could work, you would go in and put in time and the labor exchanges would track how much time it took you to do your work. And they would assign, you know, say 100 points for every hour you worked. Didn't matter if you were a doctor or a janitor, everybody got 100 points for every hour they put in. And then they could go trade points with each other for goods and services. This thing actually kept local economies moving. You know, it wasn't so good for trading outside of your region, but actually working within your region, this kept people fed. It kept people with shoes on their feet. It kept people with clothes on their backs, roofs over their heads. It kept plumbers fixing the plumbing. It, it did an awful lot to keep the local economy moving when the national economy just took a total nosedive. So, if we're going to have to resort to this, the t you know, in technology land, the, you know, being a geek in a, in a telecom tech for 21 years and working in IT and working in uh, radar in the military back in the day, there is a concept that's well known in technology called a hot standby failover. In other words, you have a primary card. Uh, circuit board that does the main job and you have a duplicate or standby circuit card 
that's able to take over in case the primary circuit card fails. Well, if our primary economy fails, we need to have that secondary economy kind of all designed, laid out, figured out, and ready to go in within a day or two's notice and start ramping up. Um, for instance, get a, a statewide or countywide databases going of which workers are available that have what skills. Um, a database of people that are in the workforce or potentially could join the workforce if needed and what skills sets they have. All right, that would be a big one because, um, you know, it's it would take a, a week or two to ramp this up, even if it was already planned out. But getting the planning going for something like this is not giving up on the national economy. It's being prudent and sensible and having a plan for what to do if the national economy can't pick up immediately. This would be a supplement to the federal measures to support the economy. And really, if we were wise, we would be able to switch from a situation like this uh, over to the between something like this and the dollar economy and back as uh, as the need arises, all right? We can't plan uh, massive natural disasters. I mean, if Yellowstone blew up, how would you deal with that, right? The areas that weren't uh, wiped out. If a comet hit the ocean and and did a tsunami and wiped out half the country you know um you know as far as in the short term you know all all the industrial and economic and technical capacity was gone from a large area on the the west coast or the east coast or the gulf coast for that matter how would you get things functioning locally until you could reintegrate into the national economy or until you could restart the national economy. It would be really, really wise on our parts to have contingency planning for this. Another thing that was done in the Depression era that would go right along with this, um, it was done in World War I, done in World War II, also done during the Great Depression. In World War I and World War II, they were called Victory Gardens. In, World, in the Depression, they were called Relief Gardens. But the bottom line was that Americans all over the country did community gardening. And we're heading into spring, so the time to start this in California would be now. And in the Midwest and Great Lakes regions, you're talking within the next yeah, a month or two, uh, probably a couple of months at the outside. Planting season is coming, and canning and gardening are going to be a big deal. So people with those skills, um, if you're good at that, help guide other people. Container gardening, community gardens, um, gardening in your backyard, whatever you can do, because if the economic crisis gets bad enough, um, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to be able to supplement, especially if you can't buy groceries, but you can grow them. So I'm just saying, um, you know, it, the people that know how to do this, help the people that don't or be prepared to do so. Um, so a couple of things that we can do if the economy really gets bad, start planning. You know, just because you plan doesn't mean that, hey, it's all doom and gloom. The idea is to be ready. You know, I mean, a lot of us men were Boy Scouts when we were kids. You know, I mean, what was the motto? I think the Girl Scouts had a similar motto, too. Be prepared. Well, getting something like this plan and the plans laid out in advance and continuously updated, that's called being prepared. You know, it's like having a, a toolkit in the back of your car in case you have a flat tire or uh, belt brakes or something. Yeah, so just saying. Moving on. Okay, Governor Newsom signs California executive Governor order for, executive order um, let's get that on pause here. And uh, for 
uh, foreclosures to be halted, utility shutoffs to be halted. That's only prudent. You want to keep people in their homes and not have massive homelessness increases overnight if the economy shuts down and people get laid off and such. So just you know, another sign of the seriousness of the issue. Take this seriously. All right. Economically, it's serious and the economic problems are going to last longer than the health problems and most likely, um, you know, once and once the health issues are recovered from the economy is going to take a while to recover. So we need to start figuring about what are we going to do in the meantime? All right. Tax day is moved out to July 15th. That's good news. Here's the article if you need to find out more about that. OK. And uh, Elon, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's Bloomberg, so they may not like each other too much. But the bottom line is GM and Tesla have both decided that they're going to uh, offer to make ventilators if they're asked to. Um, they may even, I think uh, Tesla actually started doing it anyway already. Um, you know, I don't know the status on GM. There may be more news after this. This was back on March 18th. Uh, which seems like an eternity ago already, um, with really only a few days. Now, this story here inside uh, California's Great Lockdown, Glimpse America's stay-at-home future. Yeah, I think this is kind of uh, heading that direction. I think with the massive amount of work and school from home, um, you're going to see a lot less of people being willing to just go back to um, going out, going to restaurants, going to um, going to offices to work, going to schools to learn. Uh, you know, it's about time that this country got off its backside and invested in the networking and broadband infrastructure to make um, being able to work from home a realistic option you know, and not a struggle. And there's probably going to be a lot of room for experts in uh, how to deal with work from home as we have, we're going to have a national learning curve. But I think that the way this is headed, this is going to be a much longer term and much wider spread trend than people are thinking it is right now. People are thinking this is going to be short term. I don't necessarily think so. Um, now, and another thing that, that is going to be good about this is you hear a lot, you've heard uh, every now and then in the news about things like school shootings and workplace uh, shootings and people going off the rails and shooting places up. Well, it would be a lot harder for that to happen with this or a lot smaller scale if people are working from home. It, it's not just viral pandemics that this has got benefits for. Look at the amount of commuting that people won't have to put time into, um, how much gas that will be saved by people working from home rather than driving 40 minutes. People are going to have more time in their lives. Um, they're, they're going to be more financially efficient by not having to deal with the commute. There's going to be better health safety from people being at home rather than going to an office or school. Uh, it's just going to be better. And what's going to be important, I think, in the long term, if, if this trend goes the way I suspect it will over the long haul, knowing your neighbors, having good emotional and technical connections with your family if they're scattered around the country. What this will reduce is as we ramp up the teleworking um, aspect of our culture, as it gets better and better and more improved and more prevalent, you'll see a lot less uh, of the breakup of families over distance because people have to commute or move for jobs. They'll be able to work from anywhere if we enable that. And it, there's more and more jobs where this is becoming possible. So you're going to see a side benefit of this is going to be greater family cohesiveness. 
greater community cohesiveness at the hyper local level you know your neighborhood is going to become a, a, a lot more of the people you see you know there's going to be the people next door and down the street when you go out for a walk on your lunch break you know just there are so many aspects to this this is a really good article because it gets into a lot of the psychological coping mechanisms that people are dealing with not not so much the engineering things like how do i get a better chair or how do i get a better connection the psychological and emotional coping mechanisms that are people are doing this is an early look at how that's playing out as the situation develops so this article in particular is a really good one so just say um this article is probably one of the best ones in the bunch to read out of tonight's episode um it, it, yeah it's right up there with that first video that i pointed out earlier so now this one's a little bit of a throwback and a look at the future the drive-in drive-in movies hard to stay start a pandemic if you stay in your own car and uh last time i was at a drive-in movie they didn't use the speakers that hang on your window they actually were broadcasting the audio over short range FM transmitter. So you just picked it up on your car radio. Boom. Done. So just saying, uh, I, I spotted this on Facebook and it really sunk, kind of sunk in. This could become popular again. Uh, it actually could. Uh, tech headaches of working from home and how to rectify them. Uh, this is probably a good one and there's a little bit more to this too i see a large um a large new economic segment coming as more and more people tend to work from home and this gets increased in people who uh consult on better ways to work from home better ways to ne network equipment hardware psychological coping mechanisms i actually foresee like a career field in specialized in work from home consulting so just saying all right so we're going to go ahead and move on all right so the old school thinking about it is going to be an issue here um people need to think about how can i enable my workers to work from home rather than how can i keep things locked down and you know you're going to need to be able to handle security and teleworking and it's going to be a complex thing but we're going to need to develop those skills in it this is really going to be a massive segment of the economy here. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like almost the B side of that idea of consulting on how to work from home, except for it's for IT professionals. They're going to need a lot, a lot of psychological adaptation uh, to think as much about enabling teleworking as enabling security and uh, keeping things secure you're going to have an awful lot to it so this is an interesting article especially for those of you in it so moving on eating alone together virtual dinner parties are helping to fight isolation so it's not just the article itself although the article is a good one and and uh, worth a read the the social changes that may well stick um i i'm worried about the long-term viability of uh, sit-down restaurants uh there's a thing called ghost kitchens let me i think i might have mentioned this in an earlier episode let's do a quick google search uh ghost kitchen let's see let's pull up the wikipedia on this uh ghost 
Kitchen is a professional food preparation and cooking facility set up for the preparation of delivery-only meals. A ghost Kitchen contains kitchen equipment and facilities needed for the preparation of restaurant meals, but has no dining area for walk-in customers. Restaurants that use Ghost Kitchens may have a different physical location for walk-in customers or may be a delivery-only ghost restaurant. Ghost Kitchen differs from a ghost restaurant in that a ghost kitchen is not necessarily a restaurant brand in itself. In other words, ghost kitchens are, they've been popping up in empty malls and stuff like that. A ghost kitchen can actually be set up to be able to make food for multiple different restaurant brands. They really integrate um, with Uber and DoorDash and, you know, people that do meal delivery and stuff like that. Expect to see uh, an uptick in ghost kitchens and what they're doing. So, again, uh, this is economically, this and psychologically, it may be very difficult for sit-down restaurants to compete. Now, for travelers, sit-down restaurants are still going to be a necessity or at least places that facilitate eating in the car, right? Uh, you're you're going to have that, and there's going to be some. So your, um, your travel center diner, I don't think that's going to go away uh, long term. But, uh, the, uh, you know, just going to restaurants and sitting down and eating, um, it, it may become a lot less common and more expensive long term um you know it's it's interesting to see how this trend is going to play out but i'm worried you know there this is about the time for me to uh uh bring up some of these pictures and um this one in particular for restaurant servers it's not the tp apocalypse it's the tip apocalypse tip a little on takeout yeah, you know, uh, restaurant workers are getting hammered right now. They're really getting they're they're people getting laid off left right and sideways. The ones that are left are working their tails off dealing with takeout. You know, I, I tip a little at, a, on the takeout because these people might still be making tipped wages, and trying to live on that without the actual tips is probably going to be a nightmare. Don't forget that that these people are probably you know i almost see an end to the entire tipped wage structure in the united states restaurant industry and probably deservedly so i think people are going to have to go to just an hourly wage for restaurant workers period without all the tipping and it's just going to have to go there so a lot of changes long term coming into the restaurant industry very very big changes and be aware that those are coming down the road all right so now we get into the health advice this not hand sanitizer will save us from the COVID-19 coronavirus. All right, let's go. I need to go back to my pictures here because here we go. Old school soap works better on this than sanitizer. It has a shell of fat on the outside that hand soap destroys. 20 seconds. Okay, basically the virus's RNA is encased in a, in a shell of fat and soap and water together, not soap by itself, not water by itself, both soap and water together actually break down that outer shell of fat and then the viral RNA shreds. It, it just starts coming apart. And you know, basically you rinse a dead virus down the drain or pieces of virus. It's, it's like shredding paper, what soap and water does to this virus. So definitely soap and water is a big deal. It's your best weapon against this. And you need to be able to do um, 20 seconds with the soap and water when you're hand washing. So if you can't figure out a song, hey, then let's go for this idea here. Hang on a second. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, 
9, 1010, 1011, 1012, 1013, 1014, 1015, 1016, 1017, 1018, 1019, 1020, 1000. Oh. All right, there we go. We should be back. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the infinity screen for a second and check my audio feed. All right, looks like we're good there. And there you go. Soap and water. Best thing for this virus. All right. So, hey, FYI, white vinegar doesn't do it. I know I found that out. I thought I was going to make my own uh, um, wipes for the gas pumps. Oh, uh, speaking of gas pumps, let's go back to that one. Ah, that was it. Keep some diff disinfectant wipes in the car. The gas pumps, handles, and buttons. Everybody that's still moving around is touching all those gas pump uh, handles and buttons and the pin pad buttons and the button you use to decide which um, which octane fuel to use and everything. So all those areas on the gas pumps that you touch, you want to wipe down with disinfectant. Well, I thought I was going to make disinfectant wipes out of white vinegar and... Um, you know, dryer sheets, because I couldn't find any paper towels. No, those are gone. Uh, that gets into the whole other side of things. But um, bottom line is white vinegar is not proven to work on this virus. I found that out later. So I did manage to find an old um, thing of Clorox wipes. Bleach does work. All right. So um, just, uh, you know, if you want to really know, uh, about what to um, use on this, how it spreads, all the basics. Here we have the um, Center for Disease Control's frequently asked questions regarding COVID-19 or the coronavirus. So um, you can find all kinds of really solid information on what to do, how to clean it up, what works, um, what to do with food, everything like that. This is probably one of the best resources you're ever going to find on the safest ways that we know of with current science to deal, current science to deal with the coronavirus. Go to this page. If you have questions, go here first. This is the place you really want to go and take a look at things. All right, so CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, frequently asked questions on the coronavirus. It's going to be linked in the show notes so that you can go here. And there are tons and tons of resources on this page. So symptoms, what are the basics, how it spreads, how to protect yourself. They have stuff on what cleaners works all kinds of resources on this and this is probably one of the best sources of information you're going to find all right so what are people doing to cope in this time well a lot of people are doing music from home here we got lark and poe they love to post a lot of music videos on facebook they are very good they're kind of a bluesy folksy kind of version they they cover a lot of popular songs and that they, they're really a wonderful young new band um and uh all of us uh that grew up in the rock and blues era well they're going to be right up your alley um they're really good i would say check them out larkin poe and that's one and uh cheryl crow uh Another really cool artist. She tends to do lots and lots of music on her Facebook page that you can check out. So um, good stories on what she's got going on, but also plenty of uh, music and entertainment. People, of course, are doing movies, TV, board games, puzzles here. I love this one here. A kind of triumph of the spirit, lockdown Italians singing from balconies inspire hope across the world. Basically, they have like a time in the evening where everybody joins into singing. They uh, looked, I saw a piece where they were maybe using phone apps with the lyrics to coordinate 
And it was just cool. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the Beatles famous rooftop concert, but everybody's joining in. It's like it's like all up and down the block karaoke and everybody does it together. And it's so cool. And I also think I uh saw something about this going on in New York too, maybe. So um yeah, pretty cool idea. And then lastly, of course, humor. Jokes in the time of the coronavirus. Uh, here we go from the Chicago Reader. Wonderful article, lots of humor. Of course, you can find humor all over Facebook, um, all over Twitter, etc. about this stuff. So let's go. Here we, here's another way we know it's serious. They closed the bar on St. Patty's Day. Yeah. And why aren't we calling it anti-social distancing? <laughs> all right. Um, just so many things. Uh, yeah, another thing that's gone by, this is me and a, a very old friend of mine, lifelong friend, um, having a birthday party in a sit-down restaurant, kind of a birthday get-together. Our birthdays are a month apart. Um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be too many of those anymore. Uh, now, just so many things. Here we go. Y2K.2K. .2K. This is me. That's what I came up with. Y2K.2K. .2K. Toilet paper apocalypse. So um, get your laughs where you can. Uh, don't freak out. You know, keep a sense of humor about things. Go for good, solid, reliable information. Um, you know, be prepared. Be prepared for really rough times financially, but be prepared because prepared, you're a lot better off than freaking out. So, um, oh, another thing that's really good in this uh, time of the coronavirus is, hey, guess what? Happy Vulcan fingers to you. No hugs, no handshakes, just the Vulcan salute. There you go. Set it from a geek. All right, so let's get back over to number two here and uh, drop the shades. All right, everyone, that's tonight's episode 110. And uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Again, you can find us at MidwestGeekandCali.com, uh, YouTube, LBRY.TV. You can find us on Twitter. Um, Facebook, etc. Uh, plenty around the web. And uh, be safe out there. Uh, you know, I, I want everyone to be healthy, happy, and safe. And uh, above all, be prepared and be ready to do what's, what's necessary, but not what's crazy and over the top. All right. Get, get facts. Be rational. Laugh about it. Yeah, you know, bring on the jokes and bring on the know-how. Those two things together will probably get you through better than anything else. And on that note, may there never be a rogue wave in your coffee mug. And happy Vulcan fingers to you from the agent of 42. Be safe out there. And okay, we messed with the camera focus. Good. Uh, anyway. You know the drill. Thanks. We got that back. All right. Take care, everyone. Be safe. And uh, next week, we'll be off this topic. But this topic's going to be with us for quite a while yet. So hang in there. Get your facts. Write it out. All right. You can do it. You can do it. Thank <laughs> you.